good Thursday morning, everybody, and welcome on in to State's Freight Waves Now Community Spotlight. I'm Tequila Nix, here with Thomas Wasson, host and writer of our Loaded and Rolling Communities newsletter. Thomas, thank you for joining us for this Community Spotlight. Pleasure to be on. A lot of crazy stuff this week, but we can definitely highlight the uh, most fun one was the interview I had, uh, especially with the folks at Nicola, Christian Apple, and uh, a lot of good stuff that we dived into. Yeah, Nicola is our sponsor for Loaded and Rolling this month, so big shout out to them here on the last day of February. Thank you guys for that. And I love that we ended the month with a bang having them on the show. They're one of our heavy hitters when it comes to editorial coverage, and let's talk a little bit about what was going on in your interview this week. Yeah, and one of the big ones is uh, a lot of the interview went over kind of the technology capabilities and differentiators. Uh, We'll probably talk about in the future infrastructure, but, uh, you know, when we're talking about fuel cell electric vehicles, you know, you typically think about battery electric vehicles, but there's also the hydrogen vehicles. And it it was really, it was fascinating because we're going into a deep dive on a lot of how this technology works. Because you think with battery electric, you know, there's stacks of batteries. I don't like how you see with your Teslas and other electric. With the uh, fuel cell electric ones like the hydrogen ones, those are fascinating because they do uh, a type of combustion that utilizes hydrogen and it puts out water vapor. So it's some crazy alchemy going on behind the scenes. But, you know, when we're seeing in the race for, uh, you know, non-emissions and low emissions, zero emissions vehicles, uh, you know, we're still having a situation where... uh, while a lot of casual observers may think that batteries have won the race, uh, other technologies are also uh, gaining traction because, you know, infrastructure and other components mean that this has not been settled at the moment, especially uh, given capabilities as I've into as well. This is a good kind of follow up to yesterday's conversation that we had with Alan Adler on our Truck Tech Community Spotlight. He was talking all about natural gas, and that really kind of points that a lot of the conversation continues to be around these alternative fuel sources, whether it's battery electric, hydrogen, natural gas, clean diesel, whatever you have it. And Nikola has had a little bit of a tough time. They had a tough 2023. They saw some recalls, some issues going on with their battery electric trucks and decided to really quickly pivot to a lot of this hydrogen technology. Have they found a lot more success moving into this fuel cell tech and are continuing to make some of their battery electric offerings, but really looking at hydrogen as their future? Yeah, they're having some success. When I spoke with Christian about it, you know, they're making sales. Uh, I think they're around like 40-ish so far. So customers are definitely interested in the technology. Uh, thinking about setup as well, and that's something we'll talk about in more detail later, is uh, is definitely that if, you're a, if your power grid can't really handle charging an electric, uh, uh, battery electric, well, you can probably set up the hydrogen and stuff and have other options. So I think it's a smart pivot. Uh, I mean, every, for folks, if you're going all in, it's always good to have a little bit of diversification, especially based on capabilities. Uh, you know, these vehicles can get up to 82,000 pounds gross instead of 80,000 pounds. So you get a little extra 2,000 pounds because of the, uh, you know, higher weight of the tractor itself. Now they're working on lowering that weight, but, you know, for applications and stuff, uh, and these are what typically most battery electric trucks are doing right now. It's uh, kind of that first mile, short haul, uh, you know, intra-city, inter-regional area. You want to be around or under 300 miles on the mileage band, uh, just so that way because of range capability. So, you know, it's not like we're seeing for any of these, uh, you know, a battery electric, a fuel cell and other types of technology suddenly replacing over the road. But we are seeing a lot of gains uh, in terms of that short haul category. Uh, where this this technology and process is really shining and gaining ground. We've got at least one battery electric, Nicola, that belongs to Covenant Transport to us here in Chattanooga. And about a year and a half ago, after they took delivery of that vehicle, you could see them driving it up and around the city streets. And Matt McClellan, who is their vice president of sustainability over at Covenant, loved the technology. And it's really exciting to see a company like Covenant be invested in that and see the future of that. When Nicola talks about their ICP, their customer profile, and what that looks like going forward, are they looking at targeting kind of these mid or, mid to bigger size fleets, maybe getting into that enterprise eventually? You always want to go big, definitely. Targeting those enterprise fleets is important because they typically have the money to try things out. Uh, smaller fleets, you can't really place big bets. Uh, you can't afford as much to make a wrong bet. Uh, and so, you know, when I, t- I got to go check out the Covenant Nicola um FCEV or another battery electric product uh, is one of the little uh, day caps. And it was really fascinating because getting to ride in it, that was one thing that Christian had talked about was uh, for the drivers, uh, the noise factor is super, super important. Not only are they idling and uh, 
know, uh, internal combustion engine vehicles very loud. You've heard about noise ordinance and other things, but the drive, the quality of it, having to deal with torque and transmissions, it can be a little bit of a bumpy ride. And so one of the fascinating things for drivers when they're testing out these vehicles that I've seen at first hand was just the capabilities, the torque, the acceleration profile. It really is much more enjoyable to be inside and enjoyable to drive. The only thing you really hear uh, are some of the uh, air compressors and the AC things that keep the batteries at an optimal temperature. Batteries are kind of like old people at a retirement home. They're like 72 to 74 degrees Fahrenheit. So you, you really don't want to get them a little too hot or too cold. So that's why we also see a lot of the, the testing around parts of the Sun Belt compared to other locations in addition to favorable weather. So uh, that's another thing to keep an eye on. But, uh, you know, quality of life for drivers is really important. And I think that as they're talking to fleets and f the large fleets are wanting to, uh, you know, try to talk about how their scope three emissions, how they're working on sustainability, uh, using it as a selling point really for customers, because if you're a large trucking fleet, you want to be able to operate more efficiently. That does mean that by you operating more efficiently, you still save money, but you also have reductions in emissions. So it doesn't really take a very far jump for a trucking company to try to pollute less because if I'm also polluting less. I'm also probably getting better fuel economy. So uh, ironically enough for trucking, you're going to see these large fleets continue to show more interest. And that's an advantage for Nikola uh, just because uh, it, it's kind of a win-win in this situation. Like you mentioned, it goes hand in hand, right? If I can get more exposure for this and then I can pollute less and then I run better, it's it's the circle of sustainability is what I'm going to call it. Thomas, we've of course seen a lot of applications for these battery electric trucks, specifically in the drayage space. And that's really great in California, knowing that they have those really intense regulations when it comes to these ZEVs. Is that now another place where we're seeing more Nikola technology pop up is in this dray space? And are they becoming maybe one of the leaders when it comes to BEVs being used in drayage? So, you know, your Texas is your California's. I know they said due to um, California has been a very favorable state form. California does have a lot more um, the, the carrot versus the stick, so to speak, incentives. I have to excuse me. I'm catching up on some brain cells after food poisoning, incentivizing it. So the state of California is one of the big ones. Uh, we may say other states like Illinois and a few others take point. Uh, but, you know, right now for most of the testing, it almost feels like your Arizona, New Mexico, California, your Sun Belt across Texas. These are kind of the large areas where these folks are operating. But, uh, you know, as this technology matures, as they get more uh, buyers and scale up, then, you know, I'd be pretty confident that we'll continue to see it roll out in parts where it works. You know, right now, not only is weather and uh, operational capabilities and infrastructure some constraints, but, uh, you know, making sure that you can actually successfully uh, have a sustainable fleet with it. Uh, you know, there's a lot of testing involved with these vehicles as well. Uh, so, I mean, it, it's one of those things that we'll, I'm pretty confident we'll continue to see testing. If anything, growing with partnerships with other fleets, the fives or tens of tractors, or maybe with a, a shipper that wants to have their private fleet. And so there's just a lot of opportunity. But, um, you know, it's compared to like California, I don't think I've really seen a lot of other states, uh, you know, outside. It's not like Montana's just throwing money at this problem. So, you know, we're going to continue to see that kind of thing. Uh, as well. But another fascinating thing to watch is going to be, uh, can the grid keep up with it? Because, you know, the battery electric trucks are also competing with battery electric cars. And that's going to be a situation where, um, you know, is there is there enough, uh, it's kind of like water rights. Is there going to be enough energy or is there going to be enough stuff for everyone to have it without straining the grid? So even though there's a lot of questions, we're really early on in the race right now. Uh, so, you know, when we're talking about those things. We have like 5,000 uh, you know, battery electric trucks. And that's probably going to have a big conversation compared to, you know, around the hundred ish or more so that are on the road, right? So, Thomas, that's the show this week that came out on Tuesday. Give us a little preview of your newsletter, which should drop this afternoon. Working on the newsletter, great stuff as always. One of the big ones is changes at night. Swift. Uh, if you're talking about Adam Miller as the new CEO, Dave Jackson stepped down. Kind of a changing of the guard. Going to be looking into that, seeing what that means. Uh, as well. And then coming up on next week, uh, going to have a lot of great stuff coming on. Uh, going to be talking with, well, surprise guest. Got to find me a guest on that one. So TBD, we'll keep, you, keep everyone engaged and in the loop. All right, Thomas, thank you for joining us this morning for this Community Spotlight. As always, find the show Tuesday afternoons right here on FreightWaves TV. And of course, you can catch the newsletter up on Thursday afternoons by heading on over to FreightWaves.com, drop down the newsletter tab, get subscribed. We'll see you next week, Thomas. Appreciate it.